हेलो स्टूडेंट्स माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर पल्लवी राय लवाले एंड आई एम टीचिंग ए फार्माकोग्नोसी बी पी फोर जीरो फाइव टी टूडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग द टॉपिक ऑफ एडिबल वैक्सीन फ्रॉम यूनिट थ्री सो बिफोर मूविंग टू एडिबल वैक्सीन लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड वॉट आर वैक्सीन इन टूडेज एरा ऑफ कोविड वी हैव बीन सी वी हैव बीन ऑब्जर्विंग दैट वैक्सीनेशन इज प्लेइंग अ मेजर रोल इन सेफ गार्डिंग द इम्यूनिटी ऑफ पीपल सो यू मस्ट बी हैविंग सम नॉलेज दैट वॉट अ वैक्सीन इज so basically a vaccine is a biological preparation that Im- improves the immunity for a particular disease so what it does it contain it contains an agent which is disease causing microorganism and is often made from the weakened or killed forms of the microbe so either the uh, uh, covering of the particular virus or bacteria is taken or certain protein surface proteins of that bacteria is taken or the dead microorganism itself is taken so that it retains the certain properties which can be used as a identifying character for our body's immunity uh, uh, or the immunity system stimulate it stimulates the body's immune system to uh, recognize the agent destroy it and keep it in record for a later encounter so whenever we take a vaccine normally you must have heard of booster doses so these booster doses are given so that our body keeps on reciprocating keeping on identifying that yes the memory becomes fresh that yes this is a external moiety and we have to fight again this particular external agent so that is why we normally uh, use vaccines say so also reduce the mortality rate caused by a various organism so like you must have heard of the smallpox virus so smallpox virus was at a time very very prevalent smallpox was very prevalent uh, worldwide but a uh, uh, you can say a huge drive was there where gradually what they did that everyone started getting vaccinated and a time came that today the smallpox virus doesn't exist same is the case with polio virus like polio virus still the drive is going on but very rare people are in today's time getting affected by polio virus and now comes covid where you must have seen that due to the vaccination many people are getting safe or they don't need to be hospitalized because the body has its immune defense system to fight against this particular virus so it is one of the safe and effective measure for control of various infectious diseases it is a protein uh, uh, basically source now if we come to the next title that is a edible vaccine so edible vaccine has a edible word in front of it now all the vaccines which you must have heard are generally injectable there are a few oral vaccines in today's time like the polio drops etc however majority of them are injectable so a new concept has been arrived where the protein which acts as a vaccine it is present inside the food and it is consumed as a internal composition of the food and that is known as a edible vaccine so why is the edible vaccine required the reason the edible vaccine is required because immunization through dna vaccines is an alternative but it is an expensive approach the vaccines which we are taking they are very very expensive their production their storage their maintenance to make it uh, free of any other uh, contamination so it requires a lot of cost so it is very very expensive in nature because of which if a edible vaccine is produced just like a food material it can help us to fight the diseases in a cheaper way edible vaccines are cost effective they are less costly easy to administer because you have to directly eat it you don't have to take an injection which is a in a uh, from a, which has to be free from any kind of bacteria or virus it is easy to store you do not require a particular temperature at which you have to keep the samples in a refrigerated condition or in a deep freeze and it is also socio culturally readily acceptable vac- vaccine for the delivery system so it becomes easy many people are scared of taking injections they are scared of any kind of piercing inside the skin so it becomes easier for them to eat it directly and get the immunity so it has more patient compliance compared to the injectable vaccines now oral vaccines provide basically mucosal immunity at various sites by secreting antibodies don't need to worry about reuse misuse and the lack of sterilization thus low risk of infection is there 
when we have a normal vaccine we have to have a ice box along with it whoever carries it needs to have ice all the time they have to maintain the temperature but when we are talking about edible vaccine then these all things are not required so now further if we understand the concept of edible vaccine it was initially developed in the 1990s by the scientist named Arnzen and Arnzen he introduced basically genes of interest inside the plants by transformation and when these genes were expressed in the plant tissues of uh, the edible parts they became the transgenic plants. So what was done that desired genetic uh, you can say message was sent inside the plant cells and a transformation was made in their DNA. So once the DNA was changed the gene started expressing them in the form of the proteins produced inside the edible parts of the plants. So they became the transgenic plants. Genes encode putatively protected vaccine antigens from viral, bacterial and parasitic pathogens that cause diseases in humans and animals. So here the edible vaccine they have basically the food material whichever we are using that food material it encodes the putatively protective we have a uh, you can say a protein material a antigen material which is active against the virus bacteria and parasite and these genes they give the message to the particular uh, uh, external environment uh, basically they give the message to the human body to the immune system that this is how an external protein may act and you have to prepare your immune uh, defense against this particular material and ingestion of the edible part of the transgenic pl uh, uh, plant is basically it has a oral delivery system. Now there are few developments which took place like Mason in 1992 he developed the hepatitis B uh, vaccine in tobacco leaf. The tobacco leaf he was able to induce the hepatitis B surface antigen protein on the tobacco leaf. So, if a person is eating that tobacco leaf, he is able to get inside the hepatitis B protein. So, if the it acts as a hepatitis vaccine. Then E. coli, the E. coli bacteria, the, the scientist named Huck et al in 1995, what they did that they used the toxin B subunit which is known as the LTB subunit of E. coli, he was able to transfer that unit inside the potato tuber as well as tobacco leaf and it was been shown to be active against the treatment of diarrhea due to E. coli bacteria. Then Mac Garvey in 1995 itself, he uh, developed the vaccine against rabies by uh, incorporating rabies virus glycoprotein which is known as RVG and uh, he could uh, induce it inside the tomato as well as uh, tomato leaf as well as fruit. So this uh, tomato fruit it had the properties of rabies uh, proteins and when a person ate it he became uh, immunized against the rabies virus. Then the Norwalk virus, Norwalk virus is responsible for the gastroenteritis and its protein that is Norwalk virus capsid protein and we CP it was incorporated into potato and tobacco uh, tuber in potato and tobacco tuber and it was seen that uh, the this particular virus could be acted against gastroenteritis. Then Vibrio cholera, the cholera toxin B unit CTB was in, incorporated by Hin et al inside the tobacco leaf and uh, it uh, acted as a cholera uh, vaccine. So the ideal properties of a vaccine is that it should be cost effective, it should be affordable, it should have some effect also, vaccination should be simple, it should not contaminate the environment, it should be long lasting. Uh, and uh, there should be more amount of uh, effect inside the body for a long period of time. It should not be toxic or pathogenic and very low side effects should, should be there. It should not cause any kind of problems inside the humans in uh, like there, there is any impaired uh, you can say the uh, impaired immune system should not be there inside the person who is taking the edible vaccine. Now we come to the basic mechanism how the vaccine acts. So if you look at this, uh, this 
picture this picture has been taken as a reference and you can see that it is a initial response when an antigen when the antigen they enter the body they are entering inside the body and this is the intestine region and this is the mucosal uh, i can say the region and here this is a m cell which is present this purple color blocks are the antigens they are entering inside the system through the m cell so m cell is allowing it to enter inside and the two things first two things which come into picture first is the the macrophages so these macrophages they start taking up the antigens and you can say the m cells they pass the antigen to the macrophages and the b cells so it is coming to the macrophages as well as the b cells and these macrophages they display the pieces of antigen to the helper t cells so these green are the helper t cells so these antigens they are getting displayed to the helper t cells by the uh, uh, particular macrophages now once this helper t cell they identify the antigen what do they do they stimulate the b cells and seek out antigens at distant site they start searching for the antigens and they try to identify uh, they try to stimulate the production of b cell now here this blue circle is the b cell and we can see the y shaped structures are the antibodies which are uh, acting against the antigens so the b cell now starts producing the antibodies so activated b cell make the release of antibodies which help to which help in neutralizing the antigens which are being produced so here if this is the first initial response the body gives to any kind of antigen entering the body now what happens when the actual virus is entering so when the actual virus is entering in this case you can see this is the virus which has entered and it has the same antigens as the earlier one so now when it is coming to the m cell the m cell is allowing it to enter the macrophages now macrophages they already identify it they give the message very fast to the memory uh, helper t cell they get activated and they say yes i know this particular thing and i know what has to be done against it so this memory helper t cell activates and starts re releasing the cytotoxic t cells so it releases the cytotoxic t cells and doesn't allow the further in in uh, you can say in uh, coming of the antigens so memory helper t cells produce cytotoxic t cells to at uh, to attack the infected cells further the t cells they again uh, lead to the production of the memory b cells memory b cells already have in uh, activated the antibody production and the swift production of antibodies will lead to they will uh, in fact they will cross the membrane and reach this area itself and start engulfing the antigens so antibody now has activated they know that there is a enemy there and they go and start fighting so this is how the actual uh, body immune system responds so in this particular picture if you see if we are giving a vaccine here in the protein or even you can say the edible vaccine it is a particular edible food okay now in that food we have added a protein which is having this antigen shape so this food it is this protein it is acting as a you can say a figure or a identifying parameter for the body's immune cell response so the body is able to identify them they are able to activate their own system they are able to take up inside the memory that yes these are the antigens and whenever this antigen is coming inside the body we have to respond so the memory t cells and the memory b cells they start producing the antibodies in response to these antigens so this is the mode of action of the edible vaccine in fact this is the mode of action of all the types of vaccines here we are talking in terms of the oral route when it is reaching the gi t now we come further to certain types of the edible vaccines and their advantages and disadvantages potatoes have been generated however uh, the advantages are that you can easily transform them you can easily propagate them and you can easily store them for a long period of time without refrigeration but the disadvantage is that you have to cook them for eating 
Now, when you cook the potato, what will happen? The proteins will denature. So, you have to find out a method that how it can be uh, taken inside the body without any cooking or without any deactivation of the proteins. The second example is banana. So, the advantage is banana that you do not have to cook it and proteins they are not destroyed even after cooking. It is inexpensive and it can be grown widely because banana grows very easily you can grow it very widely. However, the disadvantage is that the trees take about 2 to 3 years to mature and secondly they get spoiled very fast. If you keep banana for a week or 2 weeks it gets spoiled very fast. So, that is the reason Thus, it is not very stable. The third example is rice and in rice normally you can give it in the form of baby food if you want to have immunity inside the babies and they basically have good expression of the antigen. The study said that the expression of antigen is very good in case of rice. However, the disadvantages are what? They grow very slowly, they require glass house condition for growth and again if we see that uh, many times the rice also needs cooking. And tomato, tomato again grows quickly, cultivates cultivated broadly and it has high amount of vitamin A which further increases the immune response. So, it has an added advantage that it contains vitamin A as well and disadvantage again that it spoils very fast. It has a very uh, small you can say age or uh, expiry date is very very soon once you produce the tomato. So, what are the factors affecting efficacy of the edible vaccines? Basically, antigen selection we have to understand that which antigen needs to be selected. We have to have the efficacy in the model system, whichever model we are taking it should be efficacious. Choin, uh, choice of the plant species, which plant species which are take, we are taking, we have to take a plant which is readily available, readily grown and readily eaten. Okay. Delivery and dosing issues, we have to understand that at what rate the delivery of the drug has to be taken, done, how much amount has to be ent uh, entered inside the body, how much dosing is required, like if you have to give it in one dose, two dose, multiple doses that we have to understand. Then the safety issues, we have to be very uh, uh, concerned because see when we are growing a thing it keeps on growing, it will reproduce on its own also. Okay. So, once it reproduces on its own, you understand that we are making a variation in the biological system. So, it is entering the ecology also. So, it should not affect the other organisms or the ecological system at large. Public perceptions and attitudes to genetic modification, people generally do not prefer eating genetically modified things, they feel that it may have some harmful effect and yes it is right, whenever we are uh, pre preparing such edible vaccines, we should have proper studies on those edible vaccines on their safeties and then only it should be uh, entered inside the human body. And lastly, the quality control and licensing. At present, there are very few regulations related to the edible vaccines because there is a confusion whether it is a food product or it is a medicine or a vaccine. So, there needs to be lot of input going inside the quality control, the regulatory part, the licensing part and based on that only further the development is based. Now, uh, what are the advantages of uh, edible vaccines? It does not require administration by injection, you do not have to use any parenteral route for injection. The possible production of the vaccines is very low, at very low cost you can produce these vaccines because it is just like cultivation, once you make a change in the plant then you can di directly cultivate it as you do in a normal uh, cultivation. It does not require separation and purification of vaccines from the plant materials, you do not have to do any separation, isolation, nothing is required, directly you take the food material and it is given to the patient like a food material itself. It does not require any syringe, needle, sterilization, nothing. It is economical in mass production as well as transportation, you do not require deep freezers, you do not require transporters which are going to uh, require special uh, deep freezes inside them. They are heat stable eliminate the need of refrigeration. Now, we come to the disadvantages of edible vaccines, like the advantages there are missed many disadvantages also associated with the edible vaccine. First of all, development of immunotolerance to vaccine peptide or 
protein ok so it can be that the immune system becomes uh, gradually tolerant to the proteins present in the vaccine and it doesn't treat it as a antigen so gradually the body's immune system also forgets it as a antigen which may prove to be uh, wrong in many cases consistency of dosage from fruit to fruit plant to plant generation to generation is not similar because it is a biological system it is going to have many variations so you cannot as a certain that yes once you prepared a vaccine it will retain all the properties in all the batches in all the generation in all the plant parts so that has to be studied stability of vaccine in fruit to fruit is not known we do not know that in fruits at what stage how much stability is there of the uh, antigens present dosage of vaccine would be variable the dose of the vaccine is variable if it he, if the person is old if the uh, he, uh, the dose will be different if the person is young the dose will be different so we should not know what is the amount of food material that has to enter the plant uh, the human being selection of the best plant is difficult certain foods like potato are eaten raw and uh, cooking the food might weaken the medicine present in it not convenient for infants many of the foods they are not convenient for infants up to 6 months we cannot give feed them anything uh, so we cannot give the edible vaccines to them safety aspects whenever we are preparing the edible vaccines we have to check that there is no contamination through cross pollination vaccine antigen may affect the browsing animals there are many animals which we which eat the plants in general so we have to check that the vaccines are not eaten by the animals who are grazing them vaccine contamination via plant debris spreading on surface and ground waters after a human living in the area drinking vaccine pollute, uh, polluted water or breathing vaccine polluted dust so humans can get affected if they start drinking this vaccine affected uh, water or uh, if they breathe the air and lastly cultivation and production of pharmaceutical crops should be limited to control the production facilities like greenhouse or plant tissue culture that prevent the environment release of the biopharmaceutical so we have to do it under a you can say uh, a particular region area only it should be limited it should be restricted it should not be done openly to avoid any contamination in the ecology now lastly we come to the discussion that how can we make the edible vaccine inside the lab so for this first of all we will take a leaf or the explant of the desired plant which we want to do the uh, plant tissue culture and we will be producing the edible vaccine through this plant tissue culture technique only secondly we have to take a bacterial cell the bacterial cell which is generally used is agrobacterium tumificans and in this bacteria we have a plasmid in in the plasmid we have one region which is known as the antigen gene then we have the antibiotic resistance gene so these both are present inside our bacterial cell okay now what we do that we take a petri dish where we have the nutrient medium we have placed our explant and along with that we also add the agrobacterium tumificans which is having the desired antigen gene message as well as antibiotic resistance gene so this agrobacterium tumificans is carrying our message of the antigen protein so here we have added the bacteria we have added the explant nutrient medium and also we will add uh, basically we will start you can say the incubation of this particular nutrient medium gradually what will happen if we look at this part here this bacteria it transfers is antigen gene as well as antibiotic resistant gene inside the dna of the plant cell so once it enters the plant cell now the plant cell is carrying the gene antigen gene message as well as antibiotic resistant gene message both is there inside the plant cell the incubation goes on and later what happens that we transfer the callus into a antibiotic medium so here in this antibiotic medium what we are doing we are killing all the agrobacterium tumificans now and now we have only the callus which is having all the genetic information so here because of the uh, you can say antibiotic resistant gene the cells of the callus don't die that is the purpose of adding the antibiotic resistance gene 
now the callus goes on dividing dividing okay so we are exposing the leaf to an antibiotic to kill the cells that lack the new genes wait for surviving gene is altered now and now what we do we start multiplying the cells and we let it form the callus now once the callus is formed it is further put in a medium which allows the callus to do the sprouting of the shoots and the roots once it becomes hardened it is planted inside the soil and from the soil we have the production of the plant part which we require for in this case it is a potato so the potato tubers start producing once we have planted inside the soil so this is the process how we can manufacture the edible vaccine by placing a plant material inside a medium which is having the bacteria agrobacterium tumefecans the bacteria is having the message for the antigen as well as it is having the message for the antibiotic resistance gene it grows gradually it is transferred into a fresh medium those cells which who have not taken that gene material they are killed in the antibiotic medium and also the bacteria is killed itself later like a normal plant tissue culture the cells are converted to callus into a entire plant and transferred into the fields and those food material can be used as a edible vaccine so this is a inexpensive material method where we can easily use the technique for development of vaccines however a lot of research as well as quality control and regulatory intrusion is required for worldwide acceptance of this edible vaccines with this we finish the unit 3 of bp405t thank you very much